Good morning, happy Friday. It's also Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year. It's also Tibetan New Year. Um, a lot of Asian cultures celebrate this time of year. Their calendar operates on 12 lunar month cycles, which is actually kind of more in tune to our nature. And it's about 364 days. Um, the main features or that you want to focus on are fortune, happiness, health. Those are the three kind of touchstones that when people are celebrating uh, Lunar New Year, they focus on. And I really, really, really love that out of all the cultures that come to mind when I think about the interconnectivity of families and previous generations, I usually think of Asian cultures. Uh, when they built the Chinese uh, nursing home in New Richmond Hill, it was completely unheard of. It's actually considered shameful in some cultures to let strangers take care of your elders. Uh, I think that people live longer because of their connection to their elders. Um, in the Chinese New Year, the idea that the year actually starts now, and I love that because we're moving towards light. and. Um, it's a little more optimistic, I feel, like, than our New Year's, which is a big drunken gathering. Um, I found this reading that kind of matched this idea of connectivity to our elders and our previous generations. During Chinese New Year celebrations, it's about 15 days long, they often have meals and certain touch points that are auspicious towards those who have gone, people have passed away. And I know it's a big time um, for going to the, the funeral, funeral cemetery of those you've lost. Uh, maybe there's certain things in your family or home, food or traditions that link back to the people that you've lost. And this reading came up, I was looking for a New Year's reading, but those who came before us, turning to our ancestors for guidance. So this article probably relates to more like in the native culture, the ancestors of the earth, but I'm going to take it literally to our own ancestors, our family, our lineage. Many entities assume the role of spirit guides. Throughout our lives, we may call upon angels, animals, nature, um, maybe you follow a guru. Um, our ancestors represent another wellspring that we can draw wisdom from in times of need, for they too act as our spirit guide. Some people say that when you see a red cardinal, it's someone that you've lost who's just checking in on you, and I kind of find that comforting. So think about that. Um, I also think of all the objects that the person left for me. Say that I have a platter and every time I bring it out I smile and I think about the story that my mom would have told me where the platter came from and the meals that must have already been celebrated with that platter. So the idea of spirit guide and our ancestor connection, it is in everyday objects because that is like a talisman, it helps us remember them. It's in certain act attributes about you, maybe there's things about you that your family would say, oh you look just like uncle so-and-so. Our ancestors represent other wellspring that we can draw um, wisdom from in times. And often we'll think back, how would my mom do, handle this? They can empathize with our fears, our frailties, and feeling of insecurity, worry, and temptation. So sometimes when you're feeling particularly down about something, I know I personally think back to a discussion I would have had with, say, my mom, my grandma, someone who's gone. Once you've requested their guidance, ancestral spirit guides will see that you're emerged unscathed on the far side of conflicts. Some of this is a little new age for myself and others. And well equipped to fulfill your potential. If your relationship with your relatives was strained when they were on this earth and you feel disconnected from your heritage, the thought of asking them for help can be discerning, disconcerting. And I do have a couple friends, particularly my gay friends, where their family did abandon them when they were younger, but later in life they got when the person who created the wedge in their family passes away, they're able to reconnect through all the family and can do have a do-over they're not forever gone there's also ancestry DNA which I enjoy because it gives me that reconnection with what my biological heritage is um, and it's fascinating and it makes you want to learn more about maybe where you're from it's also surprising for some people it's not what they thought it was when the soul takes on the spirit form it becomes pure light your ancestors regardless of who or where they were alive are monitoring your life's journey so think of them as still there still watching over you because you are their progeny and they want you to do your best. So you're continuing on the family lineage or heritage. You can communicate with them directly as well as through meditation, your dreams, or in written word. Write them a letter if there's somebody that you're missing. Um, I have heard a lot of references to um, when people have sadness or mourning, we have this need in our culture to brush it away and just move on. 
And actually, it's okay if you never get over that person. It means you love them that much. You can communicate with them directly or through written word. Some people even create a little shrine or a display to the person that they miss or they've lost. The guy, and then I also know in the yoga world, some people will put a picture in their little yoga room or their area where they maybe meditate that they reminds them of someone that maybe they're devoting their practice to that day. The guidance they provide may take many forms. Ancestral spirit guide retains its individual identity. It will have its own style of communication. If you don't speak directly or visit them in your dreams, examine your life to determine where else they are popping up. Like I said, maybe it's in some uh, everyday objects you use. And when you make contact with them, thank them for being a part of the web of intent that gave you life, honoring all the wisdom and experience that brought you to where you are today. So I'll leave it at that. Um, so Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, uh, this year it's Year of the Ox, it happens to be my sign. Um, often when you're out for Chinese food, you'll see the placemat, it's very fascinating. I don't necessarily follow Chinese astrology, but I do find it fascinating about the characteristics of the animal that I'm supposedly born under the year of. And look it up, just Google Chinese Zodiac, and uh, it's fascinating to see what animal represents you. Uh, one of my friends last year, it's, it's year of the rat, and I prefer the Tibetan version, which is year of the um, field mouse. So the Tibetan version may have a different version, similar animal. Some countries will say year of the cow. I think ox, I think is also Tibetan, sounds a little more regal. So let's come to the mat. I thought we would do some stuff to do with our um, sciatic area. I hear a lot of people um, saying this is a constant distraction for them. And a lot of that does come from our seated lifestyle right now, especially during COVID. Oh, and maybe I will read the ox card as our final thing. So we're going to bring the bum to the heels, same routine, arms by your side, palms turned up, take a moment, just feel your back want to let go, the floor is supporting you. Maybe you up and down a couple times, I'm going to do a tiny bridge and then lay my spine back down and once more tiny bridge and lay your spine back down. And one more time, maybe walk your bum closer to your heels so that it lengthens the spine a little further and tiny bridge. When you're in this final bridge, let's keep it here, engage the glutes, squeeze together and lower back down. I'm going to walk my feet as wide as my mat. We're going to take three breaths here, not automatically coming into windshield wiper. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. I'm going to let my knees fall wide to the left and pause. Check in with the right side of your body. How are you feeling today? Was that an effortless action to move to the left? Or I'm feeling tension, so I'm going to just go with it. Three breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale. And you can always walk your legs a little wider for more mobility. Inhale two. Exhale, inhale three, exhale, knees to center, and let's take our knees to the right and release. Three breaths on the right side, stretching our left side. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, and inhale three. Exhale, soles together, knees wide for a moment, recline cobbler. Close your legs and thighs to chest, pulling them in as deeply as you can. We're going to get the benefits of our child's pose, but not having to press on our face or our lower back. Make a few egg beaters, hands on your knees. Then gently pull the legs wide for a moment, pause, holding the knees, ankles flex, because we want to start waking up the front and back lines of the body for today. Pulling it into set up for happy baby. And then once more, back to wide when we're leaving pose. Legs close and help those knees come to the floor on the left. Right arm opens to a T. Pause. 
What's happening on the diagonal stretch of you? Remembering this interconnectivity helps us realize that if I'm tight in one random spot, diagonally moving up from it or stretching the body as a whole helps release that. I feel like in Western medicine we often treat the one specific problem and not maybe the whole makeup that created the problem. Not the whole person, the life, the food, the, 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 the whole lifestyle. Back to center. Let's take our knees to the floor on the right. Left arm opens to a T. Back to center and little boat or egg beaters. Keep waking up those ankles. Single leg pulls in, left leg flex in the air. Let's take a breath here, pressing the lower back down. Inhale one, exhale, lower a little further. Inhale two, exhale, and finally lowering the heel to the floor, drawing right by in. Left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. And let's take our arms to a T, palm turned up. When I was researching more sciatica poses than we normally use, there were a lot of twists along the midline. There's a chair version of what we're doing right now. Oh, that feels so good. And you can also take this left arm to the outer right thigh, deepen the twist, and turn and look to the right palm or shoulder. And then come on out. Egg beaters. One direction, then the other. Left leg in. Right foot in the air, flex, one breath here, inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, and by the third one, let's bring it all the way down, keep it flexed, pulling left thigh in, right heel press into the earth, inhale, exhale, right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist, when you're lined up, arms to a T, turn and look to that left hand, Option to take outer right wrist to deepen the outer left knee. Oh, yeah. And back to center. Little boat or circled. Let's take um, knees into chest once more and come into the setup for happy baby. Hands behind the knees. Gently pull down. Flex those feet. Option to stay here or soles together. Releasing your feet to the mat. Soles together, knees out to the side. Pause here. Arms into cactus. And we'll close our legs, thighs to chest, a little bow. Feet in the air once more, point and flex, fan the toes, roll at your ankles, remember that mobility, we want to get it back. All of these movements are like WD-40 for your joints. Let the legs fall wide for a moment. Five breaths here, arms are in cactus or soft T with your palms turned up. And maybe point and flex. Inhale two. Exhale, inhale three, exhale, inhale four, exhale, inhale five, exhale, close, thighs to chest, egg beaters once more. Let's do our thread the needle, or it's also called um, eye of the needle. We're using just the feet. So feet are bent, knees are one fist width apart, right foot flexes. Actually, can I bring that left foot closer to my bum? Right foot flexes onto left knee, right hand pushes that knee away. Let's take our right thumb and massage that right hip flexor where thigh and hip connect. 
Two breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Lift that left thigh towards you. How about you just touch the left knee, touch the right knee. We won't fully bind it yet. Three breaths here. Inhale one. Keep the right knee pressing away to the opposite wall. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Your choice. Staying here with your left hand on your knee or both hands binding behind the thigh. Flex. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Smile. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Shake it out. Roll up your ankles. I'm going to do that one more time on this side, but arms in a cactus. Twist your legs to the left. Arms stay squared off and heavy. And your face is to the ceiling or looking to the right. Back to center and shake it out. Feet to the mat once more. Let's take a breath here. Inhale one. Exhale. Left foot flexes onto right knee and left knee opens away. Two breaths without my hands first. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Option now. We're going to bring oh, um, left knee closer. Left hand's going to press away. Right hand's going to grab right knee. Let's pause here. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Option to stay here or binding behind the right thigh. Oh my. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Arms to the cactus. Twist the feet all the way over to the right. Oh yeah. Keep the shoulders down and look to the left. Smile. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale, inhale two. Exhale, back to center. Shake it out. Let's take our feet in the air once more. Flex. Lower right, left leg out of the way. And I want to focus on right leg. We're going to give it a massage. Some of our sciatica is back feeling, but originates with the tight legs. Now, take your strap to the ball of that right foot. Gently stirring this leg and the hip. Notice your range of motion today. For me, this is my non-dominant leg, so it feels completely different. Both straps on the right hand, and take that leg out to the side. Pause. Everyone's range of motion is going to be different. Flex both feet. Gently take your chin slightly to the ceiling. We want to create that arch in the neck. Back to the sky, strap in the left hand, take it across the midline. There's that twist. Back to center and get rid of the strap. Little boat. Feet in the air, flex. Right leg is going to lower out of the way. Let's massage left on its own. Point and flex. Strap to the ball of that left foot. We want to stir it. So you might add just a little resistance. That's one variation. You might add resistance and stir. And then back to center. Take that leg out to the side. Pause right arm to a T. Back to the sky, strap in the other hand and take it across the midline. Back to the sky, get rid of the strap. Egg beaters once more. Awesome! So we're gonna roll into a ball on your side and pause. 
Oh, I forgot one more thing I want to do over here. Back onto your back. Let's take a right leg in, left leg extends. Rock the baby. Ultimately, is reclined pigeon shows up often for sciatic relief. And when you think about it, it's like half of a fire log, half of a thread of the needle. So I'm going to take the right hand on my right knee, left hand holds flexed right foot. You have that option of rocking the baby, or some of you are going to interlace both hands around the flexed blade of the right foot. And imagine bringing that foot towards your left side body. Let's take two more breaths here. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, release, shake it out. Other side, right leg extends, right hand grabs left blade, rock the baby. Option to bind both hands interlaced around the blade of the left foot. And imagine bringing that foot towards your right side body. And release, thighs to chest, little bow, and roll into a ball on your side. We'll press up to your choice of child's pose. And what's today? Wide leg, toes touching. We're going to try to do our chest to the floor as best as your ability. Yeah. Excuse me, the other option is to stack your fists and take forehead fists. And then coming back up. So let's do cat cow, especially as it's year of the cow. Sassy cow is one of my favorite ones where we're going to pretend you have a hula hoop around your waist. We don't do this one often. And you're going to slowly churn. It looks kind of silly when I teach the teenage girl classes. They have a good laugh. So you're churning maybe a couple times clockwise and a couple times counterclockwise. And then sassy cow side to side. And I had one teacher that used to say, imagine you had a quill pen in your bum and you wrote your signature with your oxtail. So can you do that? <laughs> Just to loosen up the tailbone. And then coming into cow, toes are tucked, belly engaged, slowly looking, maybe you look halfway across the room. And then as you exhale, we'll do a tiny cat. Just look between your hands on the floor and push the floor away. Inhale a deeper cow, starting to look further up the ceiling. Exhale, cat, maybe looking to the middle of your mat, push the floor away. Inhale, cow, now maybe you're looking all the way at the ceiling. Exhale, cat, look between your knees, push the floor away, and come to neutral. Don't forget, plank time, step back high plank, shifting your weight equally over the wrists and the elbows. And I know in a lot of Canadian families, even if you were not Chinese, we all grew up having, I personally have a really deep connection to Chinese culture and Chinese food. Um, it was always the most special celebration for us was to come to Scarborough um, and go to an authentic Chinese place with my grandmother. Most of her neighbors were Chinese. Um, and so the most special food we could ever have when we were celebrating would be Chinese food. That continued on throughout the years. Um, we are fortunate to have some very authentic Chinese restaurants in York Region, especially in Marco. There was one year, little known fact, that I was going to adopt a girl from China. So we spent a lot of time researching China, the trip we were going to go on, the food, the culture. Um, it didn't want it going through because of the Olympics. But, oh, there's a minute. Pedal. It still kept me very connected to that culture. And then walk forward into a forward fold and let your head go. Even my husband, who was raised in Scarborough in Asian court before it became very Asian, rise up, reach up, said that his mom would on special occasions make homemade Chinese food. And of course, that's North American. Reach up, exhale, fold. And I actually have a really nice book 
It talks about the history of Canadian Chinese food and its very specific kind. Halfback, fold. A lot of it came when the Chinese were brought over to help build the railway across Canada. And as other cultures worked with Chinese people going across Canada, it started to influence the food, and which became known as North American Chinese food, completely different than the different regions of China. One breath, sleeping cobra. Pick up your head, baby cobra. Press back, downward dog. What's fascinating is how many things in our culture, pedal, right foot forward, left foot back, high lunge, how many things in our culture actually are very influenced by a Chinese culture? I've read that quite a lot of the Italian food that we know it is linked way back to Chinese noodles. Um, dumplings in almost every culture has goes back to that. Even our Japanese characters that we use in our karate, hands release, feet together full, are actually Chinese characters. Each character is actually a mini picture of what the word is. I wish English was so easy to understand. <laughs> Inhale up, exhale full. Half back, fold, plant, and actually knees down, sleeping cobra. Supposedly there are all kinds of other very important inventions by the Chinese culture that we would not have in our modern day society without them. Pick up your head, baby cobra, press back, downward dog. Left foot forward, right foot back, high lunge. Plant that foot, root and rise. Hands release. Feet together, full, rise, heart center. Let's keep going. One more on each side. Inhaling up, exhale, fold. Half back, fold, plant, lower. Sleeping cobra, inhale. Exhale, choosing your back bend. Baby cobra or up dog. Down dog. Right foot forward, left foot back. Rise, high lunge, hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. One last side, hopefully you're feeling nice and warmed up. Inhale up, exhale, fold, half back, fold, plant. And it's an interesting connection how this weekend we have Lunar New Year, which focuses on family. Valentine's, which focuses on family and love, and then Family Day, which is focused on family and love. Sleeping Cobra, Baby Cobra, or Up Dog. Down Dog. Left foot forward, right foot back. High Lunge. Hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Nice. So some of the poses that come up when we talk about working with the sciatic are not ones you conventionally think of. I wasn't aware that all of the spinal twists that we do, which we use for heart openers, actually continue all the way down into the sciatic area. One of them that I love is I'm gonna step right foot forward, left foot back, hands to heart center. You know where this is going. We do this sometimes in our, we're gonna twist to the inner right thigh and look up. Center and it's the counter twist. I'm gonna lift that left heel up. The counter twist to the outer right thigh and twist. That's a better fit for the sciatic area. Hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. We'll do the other side. You might find one side easy than the other. Just as we were doing thread the needle, one side of our body is tighter than the other from our daily habits. Left foot forward, right foot up. I'm in a high lunge, I can stay here. I can twist to the inner left thigh, stack the fist, look over my shoulder, stack the fist, sorry. My palms are stacked at center, counter twist. Let's see how tight I am. Look over the shoulder. This is the one that's gonna help all on the back body into the sciatic area. Back to center, hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Nice, okay. From there, let's do, um, we do the same thing we just did as a low lunge, same twist. So I'm gonna bring right foot forward, left foot untucked, hands to heart center. See, now it's gonna feel really easy. Twist, center, counter twist. Oh, it's actually harder. And back to center, switch. Left foot forward, 
Don't judge me. I am so tight today. I did not go in the hot tub. Hands to heart center. Let's twist to the inside. This is harder than when we're in high lunge center. And counter twist. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Back to center, release. Coming onto your bum, we'll do our quick rock the baby, which we did lying down, so it should feel a lot more easy on your body. Option to come into full recline. Well, eventually if we lay down, we'll be in recline pigeon. Flex, and then switch. Rock the baby. I didn't make you do the full churn. And, oh my gosh, so tight today. Awesome, release, shake it out. Okay, let's do one more um, pose that is another variation of a thread the needle, and that's also recommended for sciatic because the twist continues all the way down the back into where the sacrum is. First, we'll do one from the side. Coming into tabletop, let's take um, left arm up and come back down. We're gonna do that three times to open up the upper back. You will recognize this is one of our upper back poses. Right arm is stacked under the shoulder, left arm open, twist or possibly stack and bring it back down. And one last time. Left palm flex, open and stack, look with your eyes. And I wanna thread the needle. We're gonna bring it all the way back down. And let's see if I do our diagonal. Thread the left arm behind the right arm. Come to the back side and the left side of your head. Left palm is broad, nails pressing down. I can press into the floor with the right hand, resist. There's deep stretch of the left shoulder. Right arm to the sky, if you're comfortable. And come all the way out. Extended child's pose. Other side. I'll switch it over. Left hand down. Right arm open and possibly stack. And I always try to follow eyes following hands because it gives my eyes a yoga workout as well. Right palm tented, flex and open. And there's a theory that in the yoga we do with our body, if we did a little bit more with our face, we could slow down aging in the face. Right arm down, flex, open and stack. There's that beautiful twist going all the way down to my tailbone. And one more side. Right hand down, flex. Open and stack. Now I want to thread the needle. Right arm comes down. Thread behind the left arm. I can keep this left arm tented, bent at a right angle here, resisting the floor. Or I can take it up in the sky. I'm gently on the back right side of my head, looking to the other side. Undo. Extended child's pose. And then back right up. Our last pose is going to be our pinnacle pose because it is our true fire logging, which builds upon the same as thread the needle we did on the floor. Right leg is going to come onto the mat. Press that right knee over so that it comes instead of out wide, like a cross legged. So I give this explanation every time. When I sit cross legged, my knees are not directly in line with my hips, they kind of go out. They mirror the way my hips open. For fire logging, we're actually gonna almost artificially encourage our body to be a square instead of like a butterfly. So right palm's gonna press right knee over so that there's this perfect line from my hip to my knee. Flex that right foot. Right away I see this gap here, that's indicating the tightness in my right hip. Left foot, bring it over on top, flexed onto the right knee. Now, this is means I have not done this in so long because this used to be fully closed in my body. Flex and sit upright. So this gap here connects to the tightness in my left hip. I might sit upright, we could spend 10 breaths here. You could press your palm into your foot, your foot into your palm. Feel it all the way into the inner groin and the inner hips. I'm just gonna sit up high and let's take five breaths. Oh. Super tight, inhale one, exhale. This is super easy for you, you can always forward fold, but making sure that that ankle bone is really on top of the knee and the knee is over top of the inner arch. What happens is if I spread it apart, 
Look how easy this is. This is not the same pose. Flex and stack. The theory that this is a little squared off log cabin fire. Inhale two, exhale, inhale three, sit up nice and straight, exhale, inhale four, exhale, and last one, stand up nice and tall, inhale five, exhale, release, shake it out. Other side, left leg down, flex, right leg on top. <laughs> You know that I'm usually too flexible. So it's funny the universe has cranked it. Get into a place that you can maintain this for five breaths. Flex the feet, press into the floor, stand up tall on your chest. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale, inhale four, Exhale, I don't feel like pressing down on it today. Inhale, five, exhale, <laughs> and release. Roll out those ankles. Woo! So to finish the class, I said I was going to look up what ox means in our native culture, or from our animal cards. Um, it's usually a pretty strong, solid, trustworthy animal. Oh, if it's not under ox, is it under cow? <laughs> Let's see. Coyote. Oh, you know what there is instead? Buffalo. I'm going to use a buffalo. You never need go hungry. You will always have plenty. Abundance is the key word. You are being provided for in all ways. And we talk about this blind faith, the steadfastness of the any of the herd animals, actually. Just as important spiritual nourishment to, to sustain this state of abundance. It's important to remain appreciative of all that you do have and consistently express your gratitude for your true source of your supplies, nature or the universe. Have faith in the fact that rather than getting caught up in the beliefs in la of lack and limitation, in fact, you'll always have more than you need. So give away surplus willingly and enthusiastically. Whenever you do give something away, do it out of love from your heart rather than a sense of martyrdom to gain approval. Nature gives unabashedly and generously unto life and unto death. Let us do that part of nature be the fount from which your giving generates. In this way, we experience a deep satisfaction, a heartfelt sense of connectedness to our family and our community. Oh my gosh! It's exactly what we were just talking about, the core of Lunar New Year and Family Day. Family, connectivity, love. Thank you so much for your effort. I, I still feel that you guys are with me even though we're not together. And I especially think of you this weekend of love. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.